with uh, Mark Hutto then from Jay Austin this morning for a little bit. Kind of yeah, kind of a bird's eye view of what's going on with uh, precious metals and the buying and the selling and the investment kind of world, quantitative easing. Maybe Dennis Richardson. I don't know. <laughs> Mark, good to see you. What's on your mind? Good today, to see sir? you, Bill. Yeah. Hey, what is going on here? A lot of people have been wondering. Uh, they've seen the tapering going on, quantitative easing here for a while. And a long, long time ago, you know, the gold bugs have been pounding away. Ooh, 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 all this printing, it's going to be hyperinflation, hyperinflation. But yet what we've been seeing is kind of a deflationary trend in, right. in a lot of different uh, commodities, including in gold and silver prices. And you've seen that in your business, right? That's right. What is yeah. the story? What do you think has been going on here? Well, if we were watching the market last year, we saw a lot of things that seemed kind of counterintuitive going on. And this is what I call the quantitative easing double-edged sword or the stimulus double-edge. The double edge of it. Yeah, there's okay. two sides to that because what we saw all last year was you know, quantitative easing, the stimulus was going to continue. Even though it was going to continue and they weren't going to start tapering until 2014, gold just tumbled. And then this last meeting, they came out and they said they're going to taper, and gold's really stabilized since the new year. It's kind of found its bottom, at least for now, here at around 1250, roughly it, it, speaking. It, you know, in this economy, you never know what the bottom is, but it seems to be really stable this last month, amazingly so. We see the upward growth in gold being much better. Gold gained 30, 30 40 dollars, and it'll come back 20, right? Mm -hmm. Last year, if gold gained 15, it would drop 30. Ah, okay. So you we're see? starting to see a, a, a change in the trend then. Right. Um, the way the, that's working. I have to tell you, the physical demand, though, has just been going through the roof. I'm reading these stories in which people cannot get enough of the physical stuff, though. There is some truth to that. You know, India, for example, just recently lowered one of their tariffs on gold. And that's one of the behind the scenes factors that's that's going on that people don't really see. China's been buying, too. Exactly. And these are huge economies now. So when these people start buying, we start seeing the, the price go up, even though in our local economy, it seems like, well, maybe it should be going down because they're tapering the, the stimulus and things. Okay, so there's the, the, the two-edge or the two-edge well, sort of it. Where's the other side of the that The other sword? side of it is, okay, is the idea that if they start tapering the stimulus, then the stock market is not going to be safe anymore. Mm. That's in people's minds. And so if you're going to pull your money out of stocks, out of the paper, because they're stopping the stimulus, where are you going to put it? And a lot of people are going to put it in metals. And so that's the two-edged side. We're already starting to see a little bit of this, uh, some tiptoeing. Now, we're not giving investment advice. You know, we don't do no, that No, no, you don't stuff. want to do that. But I was reading that article from Kiyosaki, Robert Kiyosaki, the right. rich dad, poor dad. And, of course, he's always looking, you know, long-term look. And he's kind of a prudent guy. He's not yes. just pulling stuff in and out of uh, investments all the time. He tends right. to be, you know, buy and forget it or at least watch it gently, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, he's not the guy that you're going to – he's going to say the end of the world is going to be tomorrow, you know, throw everything away and buy this. He's mm -hmm. very careful what he, he says. He was saying if he had like ten grand this year. Uh, what he was suggesting that if he had ten grand, what what would he invest it in? And he was taking a fourth of his portfolio and actually putting it over into that. He said he's just looking that he was thinking that it was uh, you know about time to start tiptoeing back towards that. You seeing more of that? Yes, and part of that is just the you know any any stock investor or broker will tell you when you see a lot of fallout and you see a lot of price drop in a particular ticker you know, that might be the time to buy. You don't buy after it's at the very top. So the weak hands, uh, for all intents and purposes, have been shaken out of the gold and silver markets, right? Right. So at this point, this uh, could be another leg up at this point? You know, who knows? It could, but, you know, we have a lot of guys. I, I don't just look um, from a gold bug perspective because I'm not a gold bug. I'm, I'm a gold person. Even though, even though you sell and buy it, you are right. not the bug. Because the problem with the gold bugs is that they're the ones that, that, you know, even when gold was getting hammered, oh, invest all your money into gold. Right. And you'd hear it on the talk radio commercials and different shows. I'm going, like, what? Wait a minute. Here, it, you know? Exactly. You know, I had guys coming in my shop, and they were starting to sell. And I was saying, yeah, you know, that might not be a bad idea. And they were like, I'm so glad to hear somebody in your business say that because I would hate to see this thing you know, go up and you never know what's going to happen. But I do know that when we see years and years of continual growth in one item, that we have to have some sort of correction. Well, we could be having a correction in stocks here over the Correct. next few months. Yeah, that's right. It looks like we may have even seen a start of that even over the last week or so. Right. Uh, Jay Austin, the company Gold and Silver Buyers, by the way, is uh, is where Mark works. Two locations. And how's the Grants Pass store going? I haven't asked you about the that. The Grants recently. Pass shop is fantastic. They're just great people out there. It's really fun to run that shop. All right. What do you think is some of the uh, the, the biggest changes or the, or the biggest hot news in your line of work right now? In your business? Well, you know, the, the very latest thing, I didn't even think of this until you asked me that question, was just a few days ago, the uh, Hong Kong Shanghai Banking Company, mm -hmm. based out of London, 
they were starting to ask their larger with clients that were coming in that were withdrawing larger amounts of money. They were starting to ask them why they're pulling the money out. Really? Yeah. And you can Google this. You can look it up. And this is this is amazing because it didn't really hit the mainstream. And I was like, is that true? So I started Googling it, started looking at it. Yeah, it means like something that would be coming out of the conspiracy world. But then you find yeah. like, all right, so. They reversed that, though. They did reverse oh, that. Oh, they did reverse yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, they quit but doing it. It's yeah. kind of funny. So, uh, so Mr. Hutto, you, mm-hmm. you would like to have your money back. Why do you Why do you need your money back? Right. I go, well, <clears throat> excuse me. It's my money. Yeah, because we're in London, right? Yeah, yeah. But exactly. So this creates a little fear in the marketplace when things like this happen. So are we still looking at a, a relatively dicey situation in the in the cash well, flows of these various uh, big financial organizations? I think that's pretty big news because what they're saying basically is we don't really want to give you this money unless you can give us a good reason because we can't afford to give it to you. Mm-hmm. And so it means they may not be that particular – you know, the one in London may not be as well capitalized. I know the ones in Hong but, Kong but, but are But still, better. to actually have the bank say, well, you know, give, <laughs> give us a few weeks and maybe we'll get you back your money. Yeah. yeah. That's a little scary. Okay. Sounds a little cypress Well, you know, you know it's, uh, it sounds like even the U.S. Treasury, or I don't know if it's the Treasury or the Federal Reserve, is kind of a little cypress on its own. This is something which has not been talked about too much. Germany has demanded that the Federal Reserve give back the gold that we've been storing yes. for it for many decades. Right. And we told them that we can't give it back to you right now. Well, that's because he, with the most guns, has the gold. Uh huh. And so they may not be getting that back. Now, see, the obvious question then uh, it comes into what is in the vaults <laughs> right, of all of these right, places if right. they can't give back the uh, the gold? I guess it has to be spread out over several years. Well, is is what they're you know in order to give Germany back its gold? Yeah. So that's obvious what's happening there, right? Uh huh. They're taking someone else's gold and giving it to Germany. Well, yeah, that must be what they're doing. That's got to be it. Which also makes you wonder about the control of the precious metals. People have been talking about the central banks taking the gold and actually leasing it out. Technically, it's still sitting in the vault, right. but uh, but it legally belongs to someone else, I guess. Yeah, and that's why, and that's you know one of the things about the physical delivery that's really good is you know people have that little bit of security when they can actually look at it and not wonder if it's actually in some vault somewhere where they're storing it or if oh. it's actually safe. Oh, yeah, we trust you. Right. right. If you, you can't even trust the Federal Reserve to repatriate Germany's uh, gold without taking several, several years. It makes you wonder if there's actually more of a shortage of the physical stuff out there than we think, or if they've been trading a lot more gold than actually is in existence. You know, there there was a, a, an ancient guy years, you know, thousands of years ago. He said, we believe very much, but in fact, we know very little. Mm-hmm. And that is the case. We really don't know. All right. Yeah. So anyway, we got that going on over at Jay Austin and Company Gold and Silver Buyers. You can talk. I mean, what's what I like? If you stop by there, you can talk with Mark or any of the other people there, and they'll 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 have conversations like this all the time, all, the all time. day long. Oh yeah, all, the, all day long. All the day I, long I had here. a guy in the other day talking about uh, firing mortars uh, in Vietnam, showing Charlton Heston how it worked. You know. Talk about anything. Oh, really? Yeah, you can build that into the gold <laughs> conversation, no problem. Hey, this is Valentine's uh, season right now. What is probably the biggest draw if someone is looking to not necessarily buy, but perhaps they need to liquidate something or want to free up some cash, maybe to pay bills or do some investment? What is probably in most demand right now at your stores? You know, um, Valentine's season is is very similar to Christmas, so you're looking at diamonds, really, mm-hmm. buying and selling diamonds. It's a really great time to do both. What are the most in-demand diamonds? Are there a certain type? Well, Size, the, cut, quality? For sure, yeah. The round cut diamond is the highest demand diamond all across the globe right now, the the, the brilliant round. Mm-hmm. Now, the cushion cut, interestingly enough, is really, that's considered a fancy cut, okay? And that's moving up. The, the cushion cut is in close second. It used to be the princess, but now it's cushion and round or the dominant cuts. Now, the way you're able to get more money for these than many other stores, is that you're selling not just to Rogue Valley folks, you're selling into the into the market, right? Right, yeah, into the emerging economies, basically. India and China are huge consumers. As they get more money, you know, India's moving from just manufacturing diamonds to having local consumption of diamonds for weddings. And so that's a huge thing for us because these guys, they westernize as they get more money and they buy larger and larger diamonds. So we're seeing demand for diamonds that are one, two, three, and four carats in places like China and, you know, Mumbai. Mm-hmm. And, of course, you're looking for, uh, you know, to buy 
the diamonds, the gold and silver, of course, as usual, uh, scrap jewelry, and smartphones, even buying smartphones. Right. Well, yeah, if you want to turn in your smartphone, that's really not a main thing that we do. Yeah, I know, but, 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 but we'll yeah, do you, it. you'll do that sort of stuff. Yeah. You'll also buy uh, militaria. So if you've got, a howitzer, sure. you've got a howitzer in the backyard, <laughs> right. go it down to Jay Austin. Is that what you do? Uh, yeah, just put it up, uh, have the horse bring it down or something like that. <laughs> we'll, we'll look at it. I, right. I'd definitely be interested to see it. But there's so much more. Find out more. Jay Austin and Company, Gold and Silver Buyers. You'll find them. Uh, I-5 exit 14, 1642 Ashland Street behind Wendy's, now in Grants Pass, like we've been mentioning, on 6th between G and H Street, next to Evangel. JayAustinBrokers.com. Anything else we should know before we take off, sir? Dennis Richardson, 2014. I'll use, I'll use my time for that. How okay. about that? Right, just don't just promote yourself, my dad used to say. Promote somebody else. All right, Dennis Go Richardson. Dennis. Yeah, yeah, Dennis, uh, DennisRichardson.com. <laughs> you got it. DennisRichardson.com. I'll use my time for that. Thank you, my friend. Thank you, Bill. Good to see you there, Mark. Mark Hutto at Jay Austin. 8.59. We're going to uh, do a quick break and right back with the Jasper's Constitutional Quiz. You want to get fed, we'll feed you. 770-KMED. If you're smart on your Constitutional Quiz and haven't won in the last 30 days. Here we go. Jasper's Constitutional Quiz time, my friends. And here's the story over Jasper's final day of the Resolution Burger there. It's like breakfast in a burger. Perfect for a 